All right, let's go. All right, all right, let's go, Tim. Before we get into some questions, Dell, you'll have the first question. But before we do that, I just got to mention something that, that we were watching the Sportsnet the other day, and Craig Berube was really mad at the Leafs. Yeah. And he was really yelling at him, but he didn't do much. He just yelled at him. Yeah. So when you were mad at the Bruins because they were goofing around in practice, what did you do? Okay, everybody over at the side. Oh, the. the they go over and back. They go over and back, over and back, over and back, over and back. And you know, I did that in the in the playoffs with uh, extras, as they say. And uh, and and from the league, I got uh, a letter saying I have to stop that because uh, it's wearing down the sides of the <laughs> of the ice. Yeah. How how many times would they go back and forth? How many, how badly would you punish them? Hmm, I don't know what the punishment was. I, I, I never counted it. I just kept going and kept going and kept going. And you know who, who said it at the very end? Was Donnie Marcotte, who used to fly. Oh, yeah. He was one of the better he, skaters in the league at the well, time. Well, he used to keep up to Bobby. Really? Yeah. Well, he kept up with Guy Lafleur, right? When he was, he used to get yeah, checked Guy Lafleur in Boston. About Would you make the goalies do the laps back and forth as well? No, they just, they skate, they skate it off. (laughs) (laughs) So if a guy did something, were like, were you mad at them or mad at a guy or? Oh, mad at a guy. So would the other guys get mad that, that you were punishing the whole team because you have one guy? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And they pick on him too. (laughs) So you're all about the action. Speaks louder than the word. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, I don't think you could do that today, Del. No. Because if, if Barubi did that today, you know that there would be people saying, oh, that's terrible. You're punishing the players. It's cruel. It was cruel that, you, you know, that it's a, 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 a toxic workforce. Monday, you got an HR meeting. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember one time, Jock somebody, anyway, and uh, he, he, he was at the side, and, and one of the cleaning ladies come and said, that's cruel. One of the cleaning ladies. Oh, you were skating them, yeah. Yeah. I was skating, and I'm back and forth, back and forth. He says, that's cruel. Well, how about one time, what did Eddie Shore make you and your buddy do? Because you looked at the clock. Oh, I looked at the clock. <laughs> all I did was look at the clock. I just kind of glanced at it. And how long did he make you skate? He made me skate, and, and I, you know, I went up to him, and I said, why are you, why are you doing this? Why, like, like after a while, you know, you know how long we went? Dwayne were up on I went one time four hours and twenty minutes. <laughs> Holy cow. Four hours and twenty he forgot about us. <laughs> <laughs> forgot about us out there and, and they turned the lights down low, you know, and, and the whole deal. Yeah. And the guys are bringing us uh tea and honey. Yeah, you were saying Brian Kilray was bringing you. Which yeah, we should wish happy birthday. Brian Kilray's ninetieth birthday's coming up. So he made you skate for four hours. Four four hours and twenty minutes. Damn. Was there any ice well, left? <laughs> four hours and 20 minutes. But your back you know must have what, been you know, you know what goes on your back when it goes on like that? Is uh, your back. Yeah, your, your back, your feet doesn't go or your legs don't go. It's your back. I know it's hard to believe, but that's what that's what it is. It's your back. All right. So we got Badger Face asked a question. He's, I'm going as you for Halloween. Any tips on what I should wear? I think what to wear is uh, a, a plaid jacket. No, that's a good start. That's a good start, anyhow. As a Don big Cheerio. Big collar. Yeah, yeah, I got to get a big collar, which big are hard collar. to find. Yeah, a big collar with the hard collar. Oh, geez. You know, I tried to put those one of those shirts on the other day. Uh, and uh, holy Diana. <laughs> Even you're questioning how you oh, wore them? <laughs> oh, oh. I, I often think how I, I used to pull them so tight, tighten them up. Oh, he died. And the way they were before, it would murder. And he should wear a poppy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to wear the poppy. This one's from Better Believe, Dad. And we got a whole bunch of questions from X. I think we were over 600 and, and from Facebook. So Better Believe, which team do you think will be the biggest surprise this year? Utah. 
I think will be the biggest surprise of the team. I think Utah, they're in a new town and the whole deal and, and the whole deal. Yeah, because they were when they were in Phoenix, they were kind of coming along. Yeah, they were coming along, but I think they'll be the, they'll be the surprise of the, of the year. They're making a run for it like Vegas did? Oh, I don't think they'll make a run for it, but they'll be the <laughs> same. Maybe make the playoffs. That'd be the big thing for them, right? Make the playoffs. That's about it. Grapes of MT. He says, hey, Grapes, how are you? Uh, how about reflecting on your days as a player in Rochester and your friendship with Red Armstrong? Well, Red Armstrong and I never really got along. Uh, off the ice, we got along pretty good. But on the ice, and he, he, he thought he was a tough guy, and I was. Well, I think sort of tough guy. And uh, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. He, he, he could throw us pretty good. I remember his red hair, and his face used to be purple. Like, he used to get red because yeah. he red hair, but when he would skate, he's one of those guys whose face, he would get almost purple, red. Yeah, it would get purple. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we told the story once before, but I'll tell it again. It's one of, the, one of the weirdest stories Cindy and I told us before. Now, Red Armstrong uh, died under let's say, um, he, he controversial was, circumstances or yeah. strange circumstances. Yeah, it was, he was, he was a high-rise guy that used to do high, welding. Yeah, he was like a, he worked on the steel, right? Yeah. And, um, and he, did he fall? Yeah, he fell. He fell. And his wife, Donna, right? right? Donna yeah, Armstrong? Donna. She didn't think that he, that he died. And I remember her saying to mom that, you know, it wasn't red in the red in the coffin, and you know something's going on. She didn't believe that he that yeah. it, that was him. So about bef- I, it was either just before the whole COVID thing or after the COVID thing. Cindy and I were out front of my house, and this guy came up about the size of Red. Red was about six six one, yeah. right? And he had white white hair. And people who have red hair when they get older. Their hair yeah, goes white. Right. That's why you see a lot of Irish people with like older men with yeah. white hair and a beard. And he he walked up and he says, um, "Is Don Cherry live around here?" And I said, uh, and, "And I just got a kind." Cindy and I got a kind strange look, and I, we go, uh, "I go, uh, no, I, I said, yeah, but he's up north right now." And he goes, "Oh, I go, okay." And he kind of smirked and he said, "Tell him Norm says hello." Normie says hello. Yeah, he used to call himself Normie. Normie, because it's Norm Norm Armstrong. And, you know, you're in that moment where you kind of get shocked, right? Yeah. And I'm wondering if that was Red. I don't don't know any Normie. I don't don't know. Yeah, I don't know anybody. I I don't know anybody named Normie. He would have red hair, or he would have gray hair. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as he left, Cindy turned to me and said, was that Red Armstrong? Like, like he, I go, geez, like, we should have said, Red, is that you? Yeah. You know, and <laughs> Run that. after him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember one time with Red, too. His son uh, was, a, was a Marine, and um, he wrote you a letter. He, they were going over to Kuwait, and he, he wrote you a letter. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I remember him reading I, I forget. Oh. But Rochester was, we had a grand time in Rochester. I often wonder if I should have left, but but, but Boston Bruins, I had to leave. Yeah, because you questioned that. I remember you said to mom, I don't know if we should go. I, I said no. Yeah. Well, you know that uh, Jerry Tabazzini. Uh, so they offered him the job after you they, said no yeah, to Harry. Yeah. And, and, you know, he was the next player and all that stuff and everything like that. And, and had to phone him back and tell him he didn't have the job. Yeah, you took it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was. Yeah, but I remember I, we had lots of fun in Rochester. War Memorial, that was all great. And remember, I said to you, I said we're going to meet Bobby Orr. <clears throat> and no, no, you came to me and and you said, you mean I'm going to meet Bobby Orr? And I said, yeah, man, me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad, this one's for D D Blood, B B Blood. Don, if you were Baruby and Wall is ready to get back into the net, do you start him right away, or you do you make him wait and keep playing Stolzar? I keep playing Stolzar, and uh, I would make him wait. First, first loss that you know, one of the goalies had, you'd put him back in. 
like the thing with Barubi is that he like he doesn't he walks in there with Wall you know he even though Wall signed a big contract this year with the lease well he a, a relatively big contract you're not right. stopping pucks what are you gonna do yeah what are you gonna go with but that but they have so many goalies right they yeah. have Murray they have yeah. Stolzar they have Wall you mean I if, think Murray's gonna be in there at the end. You know, you don't think that way, eh, Tim? No, I think the guy in it now, Stolzar, he'll, oh, yeah, he'll be, he'll be the guy. You know, because I think he's, he's got something to prove, right? He does, yeah, and he's building rapport with the team now too. Yeah, getting, yeah, like he getting play, in the groove. He played well. That he hasn't. I don't really don't think he's let in a bad goal so far. No, yeah. and we should ask Dell. No, oh, yeah, he's. It's the fight for the goalie position, pretty much. It's all up for grabs. So Stolzar's got it right now, and he's doing well. He's holding his own. He's yeah, gonna keep the yeah. job. So, if you were Barubi, at what point? And let's say they're going back and forth. What point in the lead, when in the season do you say, okay, this is a guy we're going with in the playoffs? Uh, I, 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 three weeks to go. But, Good, three weeks it comes into my mind, and that's what I used to do with Cheevers. You think too, if you if you threw Wall in net there, like if he feels he's ready, you throw Wall in net. <laughs> you're kind of gambling too because. You're putting your eggs in one basket. It yeah. looks bad with your relationship to Stolzar. Yeah. It's like, you're out. Like, you're not my main guy. Wall is. You're gambling a lot there. Right. And what if Wall plays three good games, yeah. and then, then all of a sudden he starts playing terrible, now this guy goes, oh, well, I got to go back in, exactly. and I got to clean yeah. up the mess. Yeah. tpor 70 Timothy asks, how long uh, did it used to take your Bruins teams to get into the game shape once the season started? You know, it's a funny thing. You... Used to be used to used to go five to six weeks with Eddie Shore. He so he t- torture you for five for, for five weeks. When the Bruins came to training camp, right? How long was it before they were like seasoned ready? Well, Cheevers was never ready. <laughs> <laughs> By the playoffs, he's ready for the regular season. Yeah, yeah. like was, like the rest of the guys though. The rest of the guys used to be in shape in about uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. And your your training camp was what? How many weeks? Five weeks? I, I forget. I forget what, what it was. It was at least a month. At least a month. Uh, at least yeah. a month. Uh. So they were pretty much ready to go. Oh, by by Bobby Bobby Orr, he is absolutely flabbergasted that that they can get in shape in two weeks. And they've been skating now, but they've been skating half speed. Yeah, and that's why there's so many hurt right now. Yeah, there's I like think, there's like there's close to a hundred guys on the injured. List now in the National Hockey yeah. Leagues, hundred, a hundred. I don't know. I, like, why do you think that is, Dad? Why would you say three weeks, like what, yeah. three games into the season, there's a hundred guys on on, on, a, on the injured? There's a difference between uh, being in game shape and practice shape. And uh, there's how about I say this? You don't push the players too far, or they go, uh, they they'll just they'll quit on you. you so do you think that you think the training camp's too short? I think the training camp is too short. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they only have three or four days to get it ready and and they're right into right into the games. Yeah, and they're right into exhibition games. They're right into the exhibition games and uh, I, don't I don't think the players association doesn't say. Yeah, it's winter. Well, know, maybe they don't players don't want a longer training camp. Maybe, not, yeah. <laughs> maybe they don't. Leaper JD asks can you comment on the role a coach can play in destroying a player's confidence? Uh, it is so easy to do. I remember Doug Gibson. He scored two goals and then he, then he and uh, I told him he was going down. And I, I told him on the ice that they were going down. I always let the players know that I was the boss. And boy, when you had to go up and tell a guy after he scored two goals... And I think he was in Buffalo. He scored two goals. Yeah, so he was their leading scorer in Rochester, right? He comes up, yeah, see, and then and then he scores two goals, and then you get you had to tell him he's going down. I never brought anybody up that, that I thought was was Jean Rattel. I thought I wanted to bring up somebody that was would would be the fourth guy, and and uh, be a good good penalty kill. I never wanted no, nobody to take John Rattel's spot. Well, right, yeah, because if you you like we talked about this before, like if Doug Gibson comes up, he's not going to take John Rattel, Hall of Famer. He's not going to take his spot. He's not going to take Greg Shepherd's right, and, and he's not going to take Max McNabb. Yeah, Peter McNabb. He he he, he forty goal scorer. I keep calling him Max. Max yeah, that, that's the players. That's the players used to call him Max, right? Yeah, he used to call him. Well, Max. That's his dad. Um, so like. 
yeah, you bring Gibson up, and he's their leading scorer in the American Hockey League. So he's, he figures he should be. He should be yeah. there, but Rattel's a Hall of Fame. Greg Shepard's one of the most underrated players in the league, and the Peter McNabb's mistake, a forty-goal scorer. Yeah. Biggest mistake I ever made was made, trading him. Greg Shepard, yeah. yeah. You, we've seen it in uh, in minor hockey, like when you, we used to go out and watch the games. Coaches wrecking kids. You know, like yelling at a kid and uh, um, and ruining uh, his confidence. Ruining his confidence. And uh, oh, I remember this is a, this goes back way, way back. We had the Ice Dogs, and there was a kid that we liked late in the round, and he was a Wayne Simmons type kid. He was he was he was a black player, but he played like Wayne Simmons. He was like tough in the corners, and he was just one of those guys you didn't want to play with, mm. uh, play against. I should say. You know, he's just he was just murder and he could skate though he was a better skater than Simmons and it was in a playoff game and uh the team got scored on and he came to the bench and he just kind of threw a stick down but it just hit and it bounced and it bounced onto the ice and the coach benched him and oh I remember that remember that yeah. and so we drafted him we probably drafted him for like six fifth or sixth round and he wouldn't come to the phone when we called him. So huh. we went to his, it was, to his grandmother and she says, I wonder no, what happened to him. I don't know. He said, no, he didn't play hockey anymore. She says, he's just heartbroken that yeah. the coach would treat him like that. And, you know, we said, well, you know, why don't he come? We, you know, he might not make the team this year, but we feel, you know, in a couple of years he could make the team and, you know, we, we'll put him with the Mississauga Chargers and, you know, we got, you know, a good coach there. And he just, he, he just, wouldn't come. He, he wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't come. come. come and he board. was as good he was Wayne Simmons, but a better skater. Yeah, he he was a good skater. I remember. I think his name was White, and uh, it was just heartbreaking because you saw that coach just being like, you know, being a just being. Well, I'm going to bench him because he threw the stick on the ice. Well, he didn't throw the stick on the ice. He just kind of doing it bounced. And, and, and he threw it against the wall, and it bounced back. Bounced on the head, back. Yeah. And I, I I remember watching the game uh, in the playoffs. It was zero zero going in uh, in halfway through the second period. The Marlies there was the Marlies and another team, and the Marlies scored on a breakaway, and the kid and the coach pulled the goalie, changed the goalie on a breakaway. Really? Yeah. And that kid was a good goalie. I remember when Dell was playing. Uh, I I got there a minute late, and uh, his dad was there, and uh, Roger. I said, well, "Where's Dell? I thought Dell was playing tonight." He's well. He he get. You get benched. How yeah. could you get you benched in a, in a minute? And and the the son was playing. Yeah, the coach's other coaches. The coach's son, other went in that. Yeah, I went in the net. And I, I said, "How the hell could he be? How could he could he be benched in a minute?" Yeah. I said, "I better get out of here because if I don't get out of here, I'm going to be up for murder." Yeah. <laughs> Coach has to be very very careful about the players and. Don't think that the players today don't – you could destroy their confidence awful easy. Okay, Dal, we'll have one more question, so we'll wrap it up. All right. Outfield24 asks, hey, Don, is it true that you never lost a tooth while playing? I never lost a tooth. And Richard, uh, last time I was down in Kingston, he said, I, I played 25 years. And I said, he said, I never lost a tooth. The other day I tripped and fell. And I, I lost eight tooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Uncle Rich, he played all. He, and he, Uncle Rich was tough. You know, no yeah. helmet, everything. Never lost a tooth. He tripped and fell and knocked his teeth out. Yeah, and he lo- he lost eight teeth. Well, what's your what's the what's the, what's the deal with your buddy Max? Max, oh. I'm not wearing his oh. teeth all the time. I don't. Was he trying to be like Bobby? A little bigger when you don't have your teeth in. <laughs> you, like try to be like Bobby Clark. <laughs> so the other part of that question is, what was the worst injury you had? The worst injury I had was a left knee. And uh, I remember the guy hit it, John Lapierre, I think it was. Anyhow, and I, I hit him and secured me. And I remember I remember getting him in the Volkswagen. And uh, I imagine me getting him in, in, in the equipment with the Volkswagen. So they're taking you to the hospital. You had to go yeah, into, a so Volkswa- I, to, to a Volkswagen. Oh, we, went to a, a, we went to a house. We didn't go to a... <laughs> even go to a hospital. You went and to a house. I looked at the house. I said, holy, this is a sack. <laughs> This is it's like a horror movie. Yeah, and, uh, and like and right in for uh, ha- Halloween. So I looked and I said, "Holy, Dinah!" So oh, well, I missed. And here they had a big fight 
right after, and they had a big fight after, and I, I, I think I, I missed a minute. <laughs> I played on it, but it wasn't any good. Well, you said one time that you went to a doctor after the season, and the doctor said that you had shattered your kneecap, and you didn't know when you played all season with a shattered kneecap. I, I played the whole year right across the kneecap, and it was broken right in half, and uh, I didn't even know it. And the doctor looked at it, never, never, never told me. I played the whole year, so... Yeah, I never lost a tooth, and uh, I, I I was a hitter, not the hitty. 